Hey y'all, I just wanted to make a video showcasing a Madness, Pioneer, and Explorer format deck that I've been working on for a bit. So, for those of you unfamiliar, Madness is a mechanic that allows you to play a card when you discard it. For example, Fiery Temper here lets you cast it for one red mana if you discard it. The primary synergy of this deck is to utilize cards that have powerful effects requiring you to discard a card, and then utilizing these Madness cards to not lose card advantage. For example, Smuggler's Copter functionally turns each Madness card into a cantrip since you just cast the Madness card when you discard it and then you draw a card afterward. So let's walk through the Madness cards I'm running first. So Fiery Temper I play at 4 since it is functionally a Lightning Bolt in the Pioneer and Explorer format, which is pretty good. Asylum Visitor and Stromkirk Occultists are my two drop Madness spells. Asylum Visitor lets you draw an extra card if you have no cards in your hand. And Stromkirk Occultist gives you the top card of your deck when it deals player damage. Uh, you know, the effects are better in different circumstances, but I think Asylum Visitor is a little better uh, overall since its actual mana value is 2, so you can still play it easily without a discard outlet, um, which is why I'm running it at 3 and Occultist at 2. Geese's Bidding and Bloodhull Priest are my 3-drop Madness spells. Geese's Bidding just gives you 2-2-2 two, two, two zombies, and the Priest is normally just a 4-4 four, four beater that sometimes gets a shock trigger on Enter or uh, when you attack with it while you have no cards in your hand. I run both at 2, since sometimes having Chump Blockers is better, and sometimes having a larger creature is better. And so those are the Madness cards that I run. I run enough of them so that, you know, when you do have a discard outlet, you will most likely also have a Madness card in your hand to work with. And before I start talking about the discard outlets that I run, I just want to kind of go through, you know, my main mentality um, about these outlets. So if it's a card that lets you discard on a later turn than the turn you play them on, uh, I consider them a good discard outlet for a Madness deck. Our three drops, um, and honestly sometimes our two drop Madness cards, can be hard to play if you have to pay mana to discard on the same turn you play the Madness card. So Insolent Neonate is my one mana discard outlet. Um, it's a one mana 1-1 one, one with Menace and Sacrifice to discard and draw a card. There's lots of fun things you can do with this card beyond the obvious. You can block with him, then sacrifice before damage to negate the attack and get a Madness trigger. You don't need to tap to activate his effect, uh, so you can attack with him, make your opponent think the coast is clear, so they attack with a Land of War Elves or something, and then you sack to instant cast something like an Occultist to eat the Elf. Voldaren Epicure is here um, as a one-off because A, it can help you know crew Smuggler's Copter, and B, the Blood Token can be helpful for uh, triggering Madness. I only run it at one though, because the extra mana you have to pay for the Blood Token can be inhibitory to cast your Madness cards in many cases. Inti and Smuggler's Copter are the heroes of the deck. Both are two drops that are essentially a card advantage engine when combined with the Madness mechanic. Inti has two effects. When he attacks, he lets you discard to give a creature a plus one, plus one counter and trample for the turn. Additionally, whenever you discard a card, you exile the top card of your library and you can play that card for the rest of your turn. The important thing to note is that the second effect triggers whenever you discard. So all your other discard effects give you an additional card off the top of your deck. Um, and the plus one, plus one counters and trample are very nice especially on something with evasion like Neonates or uh, Copter. I mean, I think Copter is a bit self-explanatory. All your Madness cards now just let you draw after you play them. You can get some pretty good plays with these cards. Um, you know, you can attack with them, discard a Fiery Temper to functionally bolt an opponent's creature, and this is a very good tempo play. So for my three drops, I got Fable of the Mirror Breaker here, and it's just all around a great card, and its second effect lets you discard cards, so it synergizes well with the deck. And then finally, I have two additional three-drop mana discard outlets that I have in this deck. Right now, I have these as Cruel Claw. Its effect is similar to Inti's, but you don't have to pay mana to cast the card you exile with it, which is very helpful, since with Inti's effect, casting both the exiled card and the Madness card is difficult due to mana limitations. This was Liliana of the Veil before Bloomborough, and I think I like Cruel Claw better in the main board because he's a threat where Liliana is an answer. And Liliana can just feel very bad to play uh, if your opponent already has a low number of cards in their hand. 
Finally, I have Thought Seize and Fatal Push uh, to round the deck out. I prioritize using them to protect the creature base discard outlets and allow them to get attacks in, since that is really necessary for the deck to go off. So yeah, that's a good overview of the deck. I'll say that the main pro of this deck is that once the engine comes together, you can get an insane amount of card advantage. And the main con would be that most of your threats are mediocre. If Inti goes off, you can get uh, a pretty large creature, but most of your stuff is pretty small. Now for the sideboard, it's mainly just, you know, a standard Rakdos mid-range sideboard. Uh, so I'm not going to go too heavily into that, but you can see what I'm playing currently um, in the following best of three match. But now I'm going to go through some other cards that I've played around with that I think are honorable mentions and worth considering if you want to play around with this deck. Okay, so Liliana the Veil. Uh, this card is currently in my sideboard, but playing it in the main board I think is also acceptable. Cons are that it can cause games that I consider to not be fun, uh, which are games where both players are top decking for the last few turns. Pros are that uh, those games will trigger the effect of some of the cards that we run, like Asylum Visitor and Blood Hall Priest that require you to have no cards in your hand for the effect to trigger. I also have Rotting Regisaur here. I played around with this card for a bit since, as I mentioned, we don't have a lot of standalone big threats, and a 3-mana 7-6 does seem like a pretty big standalone threat. And with, you know, getting trampled from Inti, it can do some real damage. But unlike most of what we have in the deck currently, the discard effect here is mandatory, which can backfire in some very spectacular ways. I've played around with Incorrigible Youths. Um, this card is very good, but not in the version that I um, am currently running. Most of the discard effects that I am running trigger after attacks are declared, so the haste here does not matter. I still wanted to mention it here because if you run Liliana or Rotting Regisaur as some of your primary discard outlets, the haste is very helpful with applying pressure. Stinger Back Terror. Again, if you're playing with uh, Liliana the Veil and Rotting Regisaur as your discard outlets, you will a lot of the times have no cards in your hand. And so this becomes a four mana 7-7 seven, seven flying trample and can steal the game in some cases. Highway Robbery. With the plot mechanic, you can cast this for zero mana on a later turn, which is very helpful for casting the larger madness spells. I've left it out since, although it's a very good play from a card advantage perspective, the tempo loss always felt bad. I also want to talk about um, Splashing Blue. So if you splash blue, you can get some nice cards, something like Malcolm and similar cards that allow you to draw and discard on attack that you don't have to crew for, like Copter. And this also gives you access to the Royal Skins, which can be very good for card advantage with their draw discard effect and can apply a lot of pressure with their damaging abilities. Um, blue also gives you access to Spell Pierce, which is very helpful for keeping your creature-based discard outlets alive. However, I will say that when playing with Blue Splashed, I generally did not like it due to the mana base, and there were many games where I dug myself into a hole uh, with mana confluence. And finally, I just have some, you know, honorable mentions for the sideboard. We got Lightning Axe and Bitter Triumph. Both allow you to discard for removal, but using them can feel a little awkward because as I mentioned before, paying mana to discard and then casting a Madness card all in the same turn can get very expensive mana-wise. So, uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to comment if you have any ideas. Am I missing any powerful cards that you think synergize well with discard? And then how can, you know, if you have any ideas how to make this deck more threatening, that would be great to hear too. Now let's get into an unedited best of three match I played against Golgari Food that I think highlighted the strengths of the deck pretty well.
Do you think you can win? 